Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free Microsoft 7680 certification training course. I'm James Messer. In this module, we're going to look at the managing disks part of the certification. This comes from the monitoring and maintaining systems that run Windows 7 section. And this is on managing disks. And there was a lot of content here. So what I've done is take two of the items, which is managing disk volumes and RAID, and that'll be this video. Our next video is on disk tools. So we'll talk about managing file system fragments and removable device policies. When you work with Windows 7 and really any computer for any amount of time, you're going to get to a point where you want to add a new hard drive, replace a hard drive that currently exists, or change something with the volumes and the information that you're storing on that computer. So when you first connect a drive to a Windows 7 device, you load up the operating system, there's a new drive there. It gives you an option as to the partition type that you would like to use for that drive. You have the option of a master boot record. This is the MBR, the standard type of partition that up to this point you're probably very familiar with. Other versions of Windows use MBR. Other operating systems can also do master boot record type partitions. It's one that allows for four partitions per disk, and there is a maximum two terabyte disk size. Well, looking at that, you can already tell that the MBR, the master boot record partition format, which was created many, many moons ago, is not going to be able to handle some of our larger drive types that we have out there. So there is another partition table type, a GUID partition, partition table, GUID. This is a global unique identifier table identification. It's a new type called a GPT. For, for short. And that will allow up to 128 partitions per disk with a maximum of a 256 terabyte hard drive size. So if you have these larger drive sizes or you have a need to have additional partitions per disk, then you may want to uh, consider using the GPT type rather than the traditional MBR. The disadvantage to doing that, of course, is that if you need to take that disk and use it in an older operating system, you're in trouble because those older operating systems don't recognize the GUID partition table type. You can convert these from the master boot record to the GUID partition table format using Disk Manager and simply change the partition type. Or you can do it at the command line with Disk Part. We use Disk Part in one of our previous videos. Same type of process. We go into Disk Part, we choose our disk and say, convert GPT. It will convert that disk over to the GPT format. Here's our Windows 7 computer. I've logged in as administrator, this great purple desktop that I've chosen. I'm going to now go into my control panel, into the administrative tools. I'm going to start up the computer management function because that allows me to manage disks inside of this. Let's make this full screen so you can see it. Disk management is this option on the left side, right under storage. Now on this particular computer, I've, uh, I've just loaded four. I've installed four new drives inside of this computer four very small 100 megabyte drives to give you an idea of how we can start working with the drives. Now already, you can see behind here, there is a C drive already on this computer that's a 60 gig drive. There's a separate drive, a drive E, that I have set up for backups. That's a 30 gig drive. So already, I've got two drives inside of this computer. There are some other partitions here for a, a simple reserve. There's a, a D drive, a CD drive that's already in here. So these are four new hard drives that have, I've added to this. And it gives me the option right off the bat to make these master boot record partition styles or a GPT, which is our GUID partition table style. And having the option here, it even tells you that the GPT is not recognizable by all previous versions of Windows, something to think about whenever you're configuring these. I'm going to make these master boot record types, and maybe we'll do some conversions and work with these drives and do some things with it. It's going to start these uh, drives. I'm going to move these up so you can see this just a little bit better. And here are the four drives at the bottom here, my disk 2, disk 3, disk 4, and disk 5. They are now all online. They are basic partitions or basic disks. We'll talk about that in just a bit. And they all have these 99 megabyte sized areas that I can do something with. At this point, I could do formatting. I can change the drive types. I can do a lot of other pieces with this. If I right mouse click on this disk 2, for instance, you've got the option right in here to convert it to a dynamic disk and convert it to a GPT disk. So now we're getting into this area where we have basic disks and dynamic disks, and they work a little bit with understanding MBR and the GPT partition type. Let's have a look at that. 
you saw when we started working with Windows that the basic disks was what was loaded by default. We chose those MBR partition disks, and that's what we got is our basic disk. We had an option, though, you saw, to create a dynamic disk. In Windows 7, the dynamic disk is one that is our GPT type, although in previous versions of Windows, your dynamic disks can also be MBR partition disks. So if that wasn't complicated enough, you also have to know what type of partition type you're using, whether it's a basic disk or the dynamic disk. The dynamic disk could be either partition type, depending on what version of Windows you were using. Dynamic disks are very, very useful because they have this database on them called a logical disk manager database. And all of the dynamic disks know of the others. They have a connectivity between them and they're storing information about all of the other dynamic disks that might be on a computer. And it's replicated all across to those. If a disk goes away, you still know what that disk was like because you have that information on other dynamic disks inside of the computer. Now, one of the things that is useful then is if you need to move a disk. If you're moving an MBR partition disk, the, MB, and the basic disk functionality knows nothing of any other disk inside of the computer. You pull it out, you put it in another computer, you're done. Easy enough. But dynamic disks, they know of each other. They know if somebody leaves and if someone new shows up. So if you're moving them, they generally, it's best if you move all of them at exactly the same time from one computer to the other. If you only move half of the dynamic disks from one computer to another, you'll find that you'll have the same name of the disk in both places. And if you try to move those disks back, it won't let you because you're essentially taking the same grouping of names of dynamic disks and trying to put them on the same computer again. Once you split them, you can't join them again. So if you move them all at the same time, you'll be in much better shape there. And if you're working and wanting to convert from one to another, that's a different kind of problem. We'll look at that in just a moment. But just remember, that if you're going to move dynamic disks, you're best doing them all at the same time. There is a thought process you should go through every time you're planning to move disks from one computer to another with Windows 7. The first thing you should look at is the, the configuration and the current settings of the disk. Is the disk healthy? Is it one that has any errors associated with it? Does it have anything that's not healthy about it? And once you confirm that, you know at least the disk is in a position where it can be moved without a problem. Secondly, you want to uninstall the disks. And you will have to confirm this in your disk manager to actually uninstall it from the current Windows configuration. And if you're working with dynamic disks, you'll need to use the option to remove the disk. And that will remove that from the computer. Then you can take them and pick them up, take them out, and physically install them into the new computer. And again, if you have all the disks in, a, in an array, like a RAID array, a RAID 0, a RAID 1, you've got mirroring or striping going on, you'll want to take all of the disks and move them simultaneously to the new computer. And once you have them in the new computer, you go into your disk manager and you rescan the disks. And your disk manager will say, there's some new disks here and they're foreign to me. What should I do with them? And you have the option then to import those foreign disks into your computer. With all of these requirements to move these dynamic disks from one computer to another and a big process you have to go through, you may say to yourself, well, why don't I just keep everything a basic disk It make things so much easier? And if you have that luxury, then that's actually very true. But there are some advantages to having a dynamic disk inside of your computer. You can have a simple dynamic disk, which is a single disk. Although if you do have multiple simple dynamic disks in your computer, they all have that same shared library across all of them. Dynamic disks, though, give you some additional options. One of those is to span volumes. So you can have many, many different separate disks inside of your computer, except Windows sees them as one big drive. And it becomes very easy then to slowly add on to a volume. So as a volume gets bigger, you can add on another physical disk and simply expand the size of that drive that you have in your computer seamlessly to your users. It makes it very, very easy to expand whenever you need to add more disk to a computer. You also have the, the luxury of RAID. RAID technology stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks. And RAID technology in Windows 7 runs in the software of the operating system. You don't have to have specialized hardware to be able
able to do this. In Windows, we can support RAID 0, which is striping, where we can take a single file and split it across multiple drives in an effort to improve the performance of the reading and writing of that file. And we have RAID mirroring, which takes a copy of the data and duplicates that copy on a separate physical disk. And that way, if you lose a disk, you will be able to continue working normally because you can run from that separate copy of that information. Now, you'll notice that RAID support is only available in Windows 7 Professional, Windows 7 Ultimate, and Windows 7 Enterprise. And that's because those are the only versions of Windows 7 that will support a dynamic disk. The other Windows 7 versions, like Home Basic and Home Premium, don't support dynamic disks. So therefore, they're not going to support the options we have here for doing any type of RAID configurations. When you work with managing these disk volumes, then you can work with simple volumes, span volumes, striped volumes, mirrored volumes. And you can even resize the volumes in your, in your disk manager. It makes it very, very simple. You don't need a third party utility just to change the size of certain partitions and volumes on these disks. Makes it very, very simple. One note here, RAID 5 uh, is not supported. RAID 5 is striping with parity, not supported in Windows 7. There are places inside of the disk manager where RAID 5 is referenced. And there are other materials you may have seen that reference RAID 5 in Windows 7. But in actuality, it was never added to the Windows 7 operating system. So the only RAIDs that you can do in software in Windows 7 are these RAID 0 and RAID 1. I've loaded four new drives on our computer, so I could set up this as RAID 0 pretty easily. I have all of these disks on my system now. They are disk 2, 3, 4, and 5. They are currently basic disks. So remember, a basic disk cannot do any type of RAID. They have to be dynamic disks to be able to do that. And I could choose, if I right mouse click, to convert many disks at one time to be dynamic. But another thing that I can do is create a striped volume right here. Pulls up a nice wizard that says, welcome to the new striped volume wizard. Click Next. And it says, what disks would you like to be in this striped volume? And what I'm going to do is add disk 3, disk 4, and disk 5 over here to my selected area. The total volume size, 388 megabytes. The maximum available space in megabytes, notice, is 97 megabytes. That is the max that you could do. You can't go any higher than that because I am splitting a single file across these multiple disks. So even though I'm multiplying these four together, really I can only get that total amount of disk out of it with the stripe that I have in place. Let's assign the stripe the volume letter of F, which is the next drive letter that I have down. I need to format this volume. It's not currently formatted. And it recognizes those need to be formatted if you're going to do this. What would you like to format these volumes with? And we'll call this our our RAID 1 volume setting, excuse me, our RAID 0 volume setting. Uh, perform a quick format. That sounds good. And it says that I'm going to have a stripe, disk 2, disk 3, disk 4, disk 5. We'll do NTFS. And that will be our RAID 0 configuration across all of those. And it says, notice that these are basic disks. By the way, it's going to convert them to dynamic disks. And if you convert them to dynamic, they're not going to be able to start an installed operating system from any volume on these disks. And so it informs you of the advantages and disadvantages. Do you want to continue? Absolutely. It will go through its process now. Create these, turn them dynamic just like that. And now it's going to work on creating the format. Now it's formatting. And now it's going to create our RAID array between them. You can see they are now all the striped volume with this pretty green. And they all show the F colon drive. And if I look at my file manager, I'll see here that I now have a RAID 0 drive, this F drive. And I'm able now to work with that drive, save data in there. And it's going to stripe that information across all four of those disks. Remember that you also have command line functionality to do all of this as well. If I go to my command line, I'm going to run a command line and do a Control Shift Enter to get the option to make this an elevated prompt. And I'm going to say yes. And you can see I'm now with the administrator access. I'm going to type disk part for disk partitioning. And now I have, with a question mark, all of the normal things that I was able to do in the GUI are, of course, here at the command line. If you want to do a list, you could see that you could list 
the disks that are in your computer. There's our disks. And in the two, three, four, and five were the ones that I just added, which were 100 megabytes. And if you'd like to see the current status of those, you can always do a list volume. And you'll be able to see that you have that drive F, that's your RAID 0 drive, your stripe across all of those. The status of that is healthy. And you can, of course, do your conversions from here. You can change and format from here. Anything that you could do in that graphical interface, you can, of course, do at the command line as well. Let's review some of the topics from our Managing Disks module. Our first question, which command line utility can be used to manage disks and volumes? We were just working with that. To be able to list out the volumes that we had there, we could convert to different formats, all using the disk part command. Our next question, what status should your disks show prior to moving them to another computer? We should, if we are planning to move, make sure that your disk is in a particular state, and that state is going to be in a healthy state. And the last question, can you convert a dynamic disk back to a basic disk? We know that we can do a basic to dynamic. We just did that when we were creating our RAID array. And the answer is yes, but keep in mind that the process is destructive. You're going to need to back up all of your data, have it somewhere else, convert the disk, and then restore the data back to that disk. That covers the requirements for this Managing Disks module. We've managed disk volumes. We've worked with RAID. We've worked with basic dynamic disks and looked at the different partition types. And now you should have a pretty good idea how to manage all of those separate disks in your Windows 7 environment. If you'd like to watch any of our absolutely free Microsoft videos, participate in our message boards, and much more, you can visit our website at ProfessorMesser.com.